I just want to take a moment to introduce myself and introduce Misty. So for those of you who don't know me, my name is Demi and I am the manager of Osteo Strong in Wilmette. I'm so happy you are catching us live or catching this recording because we all know since we're inside, we're working hard and staying connected with one another. So if you don't know about Osteo Strong, we are a unique place where you can improve on your overall health through your skeletal system. So if you'd like more information on this, please feel free to say yes in the chat box or reach out to us as well. But for now, I'd like to introduce you to Misty. Misty is a former HR manager turned self-care specialist. She started her company Love Your Life in 2017 and in 2019 turned her focus to helping those in the corporate workforce. She is the author of the Self-Care Survival Guide for Employees. And today she is here to teach us on our own self-care during this quarantine time that we are all inside. So feel free to take it away, Misty. Thank you. Thanks, Demi, and thanks, Osteo Strong, for inviting me to come on and play with you a little bit. Um, I know this time for a lot of people is tough, and finding that it's quarantine is a little bit more interesting than you might have thought. Um, believe me, you're in good company because I feel the same. So I'm super grateful to places like Osteo Strong and to people like Demi who are out there and doing things for free, trying to engage their communities and still keep them in the loop and really foster that connectivity. I think that is amazing. Thank so, you. So like you mentioned, you're welcome. <laughs> so like she, my name is Misty. Um, I am a self-care survival um, guide creator and self-care specialist. And I do need to apologize for one thing, actually two things um, in advance. So because of this whole shelter in place thing that we have in Illinois, my dog was supposed to go to doggy daycare today. Um, so he wasn't going to interrupt this. Um, right now he's sleeping peacefully. So let's just hope that for the next 40 minutes he stays sleeping peacefully. And if he doesn't, I apologize. Um, and tech is not my strong suit. So I do enjoy it. I do love the fact that we have this capability. However, it's not my go-to thing. So if there's a little wonky tech stuff. Apologize. I know there's a really attractive vent that's hanging above my head that I didn't notice before, but it's fine. We'll, we'll, we'll roll with it, right? So I wanted to talk to you a little bit about uh, how today is going to flow. So we're going to talk about what self-care is and what it's not. We're going to talk about what I'm seeing happening right now. Um, I am a little bit, you can say, empathic and a little bit intuitive. So I'm feeling the energies of everybody, the collective, the world, a little bit stronger than maybe the average person. So that I have a little bit of a different perspective of what's happening, what's going on, um, feelings, those kinds of things. So it helps me in this way because I can do trainings like this that sort of, um, sort of have the greatest need at the forefront because this is not my normal self-care um, self care presentation, the self-care training. I actually do self-care in the workplace trainings in person for corporations, for caregiving communities um, until, hello, surprise, coronavirus and everybody got sent home. So I am learning to do all these things online. Um, but to that end, we're going to go through how you can actually reframe this, this time, this quarantine time to be to your advantage, to actually start to see it as a gift rather than a curse or feeling uncertain or sad or fearful or any of that things. Because the truth is, is that um, this might last a week. It might last a month. It might last longer than that. So the more that we can come into this agreement with this time that we have, the better we're going to fare and the better we're going to be able to use it and come out on the other side going, man, I really am grateful that I actually had that time. Um, it might not be under the most amazing circumstances. Some things might have happened that were less than desirable. However, uh, we don't normally get two weeks or more of just free time handed to us unless we're sick or we're caregiving for somebody. So the fact that we have this and we're able to use it to stay home can actually be a really amazing thing. So we'll talk about that. We'll use some journaling prompts to go through that. And then we'll end with some Q&A time if there's, any, um, if there's any questions or anything needs to be clarified. So the very first thing we're going to talk about is what self-care is and how we're actually doing it all the time already. So a lot of the time when somebody says self-care, 
a lot of times we think about going to the gym or going to the spa or getting a massage or taking a bath or doing all these really amazing self-care things. And the truth is, is that yes, those are self-care things, but so is spending time at home meditating. So is spending time with your kids or your animals or your spouse or your significant other. So is going for a walk. So is listening to your favorite song. So is dancing around the house. So is all these other really amazing things. So the idea is that self-care is actually this really big umbrella term that literally anything in your life can actually fall under. So when you say you practice self-care, you're pretty much equating it to saying, I have a hobby. And so most people are like, okay, cool, what kind of hobby, right? So there's so many different lines underneath this umbrella that you can actually just pull all this really amazing self-care stuff into. So the idea of self-care though is something that is actually super nurturing to your soul, something that actually makes your life better, not just temporarily, but for the long haul. It makes memories, it gets you into good habits, it makes you feel good. It's not just a quick like sugar fix, and then you crash. It's something that's actually going to sustain you, get you in really good, um, really good mental head space, really good physical space for the long haul. And so it's all about your intentional choosing, right? So everything you do, you think about, you get up in the morning, how you get up in the morning is self-care. What you do first is self-care. Brushing your teeth can be self-care. It can be a mindful activity of just nurturing and loving yourself, having your coffee, is an amazing way, or tea, or whatever it is that you drink, is an amazing way to just take a moment of pause, taking a moment of still, and just come back, and well, there he goes, um, and take a moment of pause, a moment of still, and come back to this connectedness within yourself, and that's, to me, that's what self-care really is, and it's different from this treat yourself mentality that we've had. And it's really interesting that this quarantine period has really kind of erased that for us. And this is why I kind of say that this quarantine period, not that coronavirus, not that all of this is happening is a blessing per se, because, you know, obviously people being sad, people being sick, being in fear, losing their jobs, like none of that is good stuff. However, if you go underneath all of that, and you see what's actually happening on a global level, how people are banding together, how people are offering services for free, how people are actually being forced sort of to become more self-reliant. It's actually kind of beautiful. And it's actually kind of a gift because you don't normally have to do that. Like I live in the South suburbs. So my life in this quarantine, the shelter in place period, isn't really that much different than a normal day. But people in the city, it is the eeriest thing to go into the city now because it's like zombie apocalypse. Like there's nobody anywhere. <laughs> and so, you know, for them, this is really, really strange. This is a very different shift for them where for a lot of us, it might not be. But we have to look at our modern conveniences and all these different things that we've become reliant on that are now kind of haven't been taken away. And now we get to come back to our, our center, our cell, and go, okay, now I have to fill this void. I have to do these things. I have to learn. I have to self-fulfill. I have to self-sustain. And I think that's freaking a lot of people out as well. So, you know, with self-care, it's all about intentional choosing about, okay, I have to cook for myself now. Maybe you don't know how to cook and maybe you have to plug into some webinars or get on Pinterest and different things. But if you look at this as like a learning opportunity, you'll take so much more gratitude into the new life with you than you otherwise may have. So this is really, really amazing um, because the treating yourself mentality is pretty destructive, right? It's kind of like, oh, this, let's buy this because this might actually make me feel better. It might not make me feel so alone. And then it suffices for the purpose for like five minutes and then you're over it, right? So Thinking about self-care is anything that you can do that you can bring into your life on a consistent basis that's actually going to bring, bring you more peace and more nurturing to yourself. Um, and so this is, this is also so amazing for parents because another thing that I see that kind of scares me a little bit is our kids, the next generation, they learn from you, right? So if you're not modeling these really amazing habits for them, they don't they're not learning how to do this usually any other way. So by you diving more into your self-care, by you being a little bit more mindful and taking a little bit more loving approach to everything that you're doing 
and being that energy to them. They're going to, they're going to feel that and they're going to be like, yeah, I kind of want to do that too. And so you're teaching them just by leading by example, if that makes sense. So you're literally kind of molding the fabric from which they are growing up in and being created in the household and the vibe. And even if you're not a parent, even if you have nieces or nephews or friends, kids, or you don't think anybody sees you at all, just the way that you're carrying yourself through the world really kind of gives the vibration that I care about myself. This is something that I actually have learned how to do. So one thing I wanted to mention is that everything that I teach about actually has all come from personal experience. Yes, I went to Institute for Integrative Nutrition to get my health coaching certificate. Yes, I was an HR manager. Yes, I did all these really amazing, awesome things. But what really taught me how to do all these things was actually getting sick. And so for me, going backwards and saying, I really don't want people to have to get sick to have to learn all these things. And I'm not saying you're going to get sick. I'm just saying, you know, I had to learn by walking through the fire. And so all these things that I teach are actually things that worked for me. And so it's, it's, all of my creations. <laughs> it's all of my babies, all of my, my, um, my worth here. So one of the things that I'm seeing happen is that, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty going on. There's a lot of fear. There's a lot of people numbing out with, you know, Netflix and being in front of their TV and trolling on social media. And they're just kind of biding time. They're not really using this time for anything productive. Not necessarily saying you have to abide by a to-do list for this entire quarantine time. But the idea of what's happening right now is you are actually being given gift, the gift of time. And again, kind of like we mentioned earlier, this isn't something that we normally do. Like this isn't something that normally happens unless you're sick and you have to clear your schedule. Like usually most humans don't have this kind of time on their hands. And so maybe you're still working or maybe you're in the caregiving community or, or you're a nurse or a doctor or something like that where you're still very much working. The free time though has kind of gotten taken away from you. Like the normal things that you would have done have sort of gotten taken away. So you're not able to do the things that you normally, you know, you normally would have done before. So everybody is sort of in this same boat of going, all these things kind of gotten, they've gotten taken away in a sense for a short amount of time in the grand spectrum of things. And now we're sort of left at home going, okay, what do we do now? Right? So I would love to invite you to the perspective that this time, whether it's two weeks, two months, a month, whatever it looks like, it doesn't have to be piling on so many different things that you are distracted the entire time. I would love to invite you via some journal prompts that we're going to do here soon um, to really take a deep dive into different areas of your life and see what they were, what they were like before this quarantine time happened, before coronavirus, before all the chaos. And it will become very apparent where certain places just weren't working, right? And so those are the awarenesses that I would love to bring out with you because then we'll pick a couple, you know, one to two areas where you're going to hyper-focus in on that and making some modifications or changing or doing something or not doing something that's actually going to impact this area of your life during this time in such a significant way that when you come out on the other side, you're going to go, I really, I'm really actually glad that I had that time. Whatever that looks like, even though it might, it's not all going to be rainbows and butterflies and you're going to get a little restless and you're going to get a little frustrated and you know, those feelings are going to happen. But in the grand spectrum, it's all kind of like a diamond, right? It, it, it happens under pressure. It happens under fire. So it's, it's kind of that same idea. So another thing that I am feeling into and noticing is that during this time, there are so many people who are offering so many amazing things for free, right? Because everybody's trying to pivot their businesses, gyms closed, so they're trying to offer online streaming and, you know, all these different options. So another reason why I want to take you through these exercises and these journaling prompts is so that you can actually start to quiet the noise of all of that. Because while it's really amazing that all these people are offering all these really amazing things, 
it can be completely overwhelming. I just went through this myself yesterday. I felt like everything was barking at me. Everything was pulling my attention. Like I had to show up everywhere. I had to do all the things. I opened up my fridge and I saw all this amazing food and I should have felt so grateful that I had all this food, but I felt so overwhelmed because there was just so much, right? And so this is what can actually happen when there's too much of a good thing. So another reason why I really wanted to, again, take you through all these different um, areas of your life is so you can actually get laser focused to plug your time and attention into the area that's going to matter the most to, to plug that time and attention into. So one of the things that we're going to do is if you felt into your body right now, like if you just closed your eyes and you asked yourself the question, what do you actually need in your life right now? If you have your journal and you have your pen, I would love for you to write down, just take a minute, what do you actually feel like in your body you need in your life right now? It could be more connectivity. It could be less connectivity. It could be anything in the world. What is it for you? So I know I've muted some people as they're coming in, but feel free to unmute yourself to chime in to the conversation. Um, but I guess I can answer, what do I feel like I need more in my life? I guess I would say probably just because of what's going on right now is just a really strong sense of health that I'm doing all the things I can right now indoors to keep my immune system strong and to keep my overall mind and body healthy at the moment. Mm -hmm. Anyone else want to join in too? And no pressure at all. If you just want to keep it to a journal, that's totally fine too. Okay, so as you're finishing up all of these, um, these thoughts that you have around this question, I would love for you to pretend like this whole corona quarantine thing actually isn't happening. Um, I want you to take yourself back to before it all even happened. So what your life looked like back then, right? So we're going to take this in different tiers and different sections of your life. And you're just going to journal um, what that area of your life looked like before all this happened. And we're going to kind of chunk it down a little bit. So I'll guide you through all this. So in the area of your health, so meaning your food, your cooking, your movement and fitness, your self-care, all these things that make up your health. What did that look like? How was it working for you? I guess I'll just keep being the example. But again, feel free anybody if you want to come in. <laughs> so for me, like I said, health, and I'm big on what goes in your body, but being out all day long, it's pretty easy to slack off on that a little bit. So now that I'm home, I'm trying to think back again onto what am I cooking? What do I have? What can I make that's still good to good for my body, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So for this particular piece, let's stick with what it looked like before all this happened. Cause this is a little, this is a little bit of a, a, a wonky time for everybody. So life before, write down everything that it looked like before. And then the next piece is going to be your work, your career. If you are retired what did that look like for you before this quarantine, before the coronavirus, before all this pandemic stuff? Was it, how did you feel? What did it look like for you? Was it working for you?
All right, back to me. <laughs> um, in regards to the food, no, was not. It was not what? Working. Oh. Or, no. <laughs> cool. So then the next piece, next part, your social connectedness. Did you feel like you were with your people? Like with when you were with your friends, your family, the people that you spent the most time with, did you feel like those were your people? Like they got you, there was really good energy in there. Um, what about your hobbies and your family? Like the social connectedness can extend far beyond your circle of friends and your family. It could be your community, your church, your anything that is, um, would be defined as social connectedness. What did that look like for you? What did that feel like? Go ahead and write that down. And then solitude. So this is a piece that a lot of people are having a lot of trouble with right now, is that they've been forced into solitude. A lot of extroverts are having a really hard time. A lot of people who are parents um, of kids who were never stay-at-home parents who work, and now they're being forced to stay at home parent and do all these things and they're kind of going crazy. So in your solitude before the pandemic, like, what did that look like? How much time did you actually take to be by yourself? And how did it feel? And then in the next area of higher learning and growth. So how many things were you trying to learn or ways you were trying to grow? Like, were you taking a class? Were you learning a new hobby? Like different things that you actually really did want to learn about or just reading about. Like how much did you actually really plug into growing yourself in some way? And then this last piece is joy and play. So this is something that we tend to sometimes lose as we get older and we get more responsibilities and we take more roles on. So <clears throat> when you think about joy and play into your, in your life before, how much time did you actually allow for that? So whether that is going out and catching a movie with a friend or going on a walk in the city or something that is just joyful and just play, how often did you bring that into your life? And as you're finishing up those thoughts, I want everybody to close their eyes for a second and take five deep breaths. And as you're taking those breaths, I would love for you to imagine what your ideal life actually looks like. And I'm not talking about what it looks like now that we're, you know, quarantined at home. I mean, grand spectrum once this all blows over. What do you actually want it to look like? What do you want it to feel like? 
Who's in it? What are you doing? And as these thoughts are coming to you, I would love for you to write them down. as you're finishing writing those, I would love for you to go back to your list where you wrote down pre-pandemic with health in your work and joy and play and all these different things, these different areas of your life. Did the way those looked in your life contribute to the life that you now see as your desired life that you just took yourself on a journey to find? Do they match up? You can go by each category and, and say, yes, it does, or no, it doesn't. And on the ones that you say no to, meaning the ones, so say your health doesn't match oh. up that you desire. So looking at that, what would you like to see changed? Like, what is it? what did it look like before versus what it is that you desire it to look like? What changes? And as you're looking at all of these different categories, I would love for you to rate them. So on the ones that you said no, that the way your life looked before does not match up to the life that you actually desire to be living, rate how high of a priority that area is in your life right now. So one, it's not a priority at all. 10, it's a super high priority. And as you're doing that, I would love for you to find one or two areas. Ideally one, you can do two. I, I tend to do more than I should. So I, I, I hear you if you can only, if you can't, if you can't think about doing just one, but ideally it's just one area where you want to spend the most of your time and attention tweaking, changing, realigning, shifting the energy in this space it could be in your relationships it could be in your health it could be in your career whatever that looks like for you um how do you actually bring forth these changes that you want to see happen in this area of your life what is this exercise this awareness what is it asking you to do what is it, how is it asking you to show up differently and two I want to invite you to something else. It may not be that you have to do things differently. It may actually be that you need to stop doing some things. So maybe you have some destructive habits that you are becoming a little bit more aware of that you just need to stop. Like it doesn't necessarily mean you need to do per se anything, but it actually means you need to stop doing. Um, I example of that myself. I am a little bit of a busybody and I don't always know how to rest. And so, <laughs> so for me, this quarantine period is actually asking me to rest. It's asking me to not do so much. So that in and of itself is my work during this quarantine period. So it might be for you too. Like maybe you are like me and you have a million, billion things going on in every, every given day. And this is actually forcing you to stay in one spot and be still. And that might be a hard task for you, but it might be something that is completely worth your time and your energy during this. So again, the idea is that we're learning to disconnect from all the noise, all the other stuff that's going on and coming back to the things that are really, really important because that is self-care. It's tending to the pieces of our lives that actually really need our time and attention, right? So 
again, kind of going back to what we were talking about at the very beginning about all these different people offering all these different services and events and online gatherings and all these different things. Um, if you didn't know where you wanted to spend your time and your energy during this time, and you started plugging into all these different things, I promise you, you would get so burnt out and so exhausted. It would not be fun at all. And you would likely come out on the other end of this feeling like you have you had no idea what exactly you did during this time. So what I would invite you to do is be more intentional about this time. And even if it's cleaning out a drawer every day and that makes you feel like you accomplished something amazing, go do it. That sounds awesome. So even if it means you took a nap every day and that's something that you don't normally do, cool. That's awesome. There is no right or wrong when it comes to your own self-care. Everybody on this call is going to have different answers to all of these different questions. Everybody's life looks completely different. So the biggest lesson that I can, I can give to you and hope that you take away is that this is your own journey. Your own self-care is your journey. And so it doesn't really matter what everybody else is doing. It doesn't really matter what everybody else is answers to all these things were. It really just matters what you want to focus on. And, you know, if you're in an environment where you feel like it might be a little challenging to work on these things, I would invite you to have a conversation. So if there's kids in your house that are, you know, of age to be able to have a conversation, like maybe, maybe that's warranted. You know, sometimes, again, communication solves like 99% of all problems. So if you kind of can communicate needs and different things, these are things, again, that you can actually work with your kids on as well. They can come and work on different things in their own self-care. Like maybe you want to start having a really great morning routine. And as a family or whatever your dynamic is in your house, maybe you do that together. It's kind of like a cohesive bonding experience where everybody just takes five minutes, 15 minutes, an hour, whatever that looks like to just start their day off really, really great. I have some resources and different trainings on, on this specific topic, but I'm just using that as an example. So I hope that this makes sense and it brought some awareness to different areas of your life that maybe need a little bit more attention than others. And, you know, again, keep in mind that this could be a work in progress. You might think that there's one area that needed your time and attention, and next week you figure out, um, you next week you figure out that there is something of a higher priority, and then you kind of want to focus a little bit more there. That's okay too. Self care is ever evolving, so I would just love for you to look at this as a little bit of an, an adventure and look at this time again as a gift to be able to work a little bit more on the connectivity to yourself. Because what I'm also seeing, I don't think I mentioned this, I meant to, but I don't think I mentioned this, is what I'm seeing a lot of people do is they're reaching out for connection. They feel like all their connection has gotten taken away from them. And I think what's really ended up happening is what's being highlighted is the fact that we've become so disconnected from ourselves that because we've been sort of disconnected from coworkers and people in the outside world, we've forgotten how to spend time with ourselves and be in our own thoughts. That doesn't mean that we need to stay like that forever, of course, or that we never need human contact or anything like that. It just means that being in your solitude, being in your own thoughts, spending time with yourself, I think can have the, have the potential to be something really amazing and really exciting and something that you look forward to doing. And then when it actually happens, sometimes there can be that fear that like, oh my gosh, what do I do now? right? We spend so much time wishing for more time by ourselves and more silence and more stillness and more all these things. And then it happens. And then we like freeze and go, oh my gosh, I don't even know what to do right now. Right? So stay with yourself through all those emotions because during this time, they're probably all going to come up. And the best thing that you can do also is with these areas of focus, if there are certain people that you're connected to that could actually help in this area, like maybe there are free resources for, um, I don't know, say you were wanting to work on, I don't know, you were wanting to start a new hobby. Like for me, okay, this is a good example. For me, I actually really wanted to start pottery throwing. Like not actually throwing pottery against the wall, but like playing with the clay and building things. And I actually meant to do it at the beginning of the year. It was something I really wanted to do. And then of course, during this quarantine time, I'm going, oh my gosh, I really want to do, you know, ceramics and, and do all these things. Of course, I can't do it yet because of, you know, shelter in place. But on the other side of this, I know that's what I'm going to do. 
but now I know I can plug into resources, you know, social media accounts or, or whatever that looks like that is all about learning how to do ceramics or pottery throwing or different things. I have a little bit of a, of a guidance where I can kind of clear all the other stuff away um, because it becomes so distracting and it feels like everything is just talking to you all at once. So that is really all I have for you today. So I, um, I don't know if Debbie, if you have anything to add or if you want to open it up to questions, um, kind of open to everything. I think this was really great. One of the things that I love that you, I took a page of notes is that um, we are being given the gift of time. And this is something that I have been thinking about. And it's so easy for all of us in our day to day to always say we don't have time to, I don't know, clean our house, organize, be with our family or whatever. But like you said, we have all the time right now. And what are we going to do with it? And I think it's really great these questions that you put out to really examine what our life was like before all of this, what wasn't working, what were we not pleased with, or maybe what were we pleased with and what can we keep and what can we change? And this is a time to really create those good habits that we want in our lives. So thank you mm -hmm. for putting that out there. And I appreciate you for your time and your thought into all of this. And we do have a few more minutes. If anybody would like to ask any questions, feel free. We're both here. We can give yeah. you guys a few more minutes. <laughs> yeah, you know, one thing I wanted to mention um, real quick when you just said that is so, you know, that I think that you hit on such a great point that I actually didn't even mention is that, you know, when we go, when we get past all of this, life is going to be a new normal. Like it might not look anything like what we have since become accustomed to. It might be totally the same. It might be nothing might be the same, but it doesn't mean that you can't change different things in your life to come out on the other side. You have this time to be able to solidify those habits and solidify these, these different things that you want to change. That way, when we do come out of this, it's second nature. Whereas it's really hard to try to make a new habit or a or a new self-care practice or something when we're in life and we're just trying to, we're kind of in survival mode. We're just trying to survive day to day and get through the day and make sure everything you know, gets handled. It, it makes it really difficult to, to try new habits. So now is a really great time to play with a lot of this stuff. So I'm so grateful that you mentioned that. Thank you. Thank you. All right, well, if no one has any questions or input, anything, I guess we can. Yeah, everybody's on mute. So if you had a question, um, you'll have to take yourself off mute or write in the chat. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I did write down your questions as well. So if anybody wants them, I can um, get them to you. And we are recording this, so you can also have that as well. Cool. Thank you so much, Demi and Osteo Strong, for having this and, and just allowing these kinds of resources being able to flow to your clients and, and the people that you're connected to. Cause I think that's, it's amazing. It's, it's so great to still have access to the things that are really important. So thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, if no one has any questions, I'm going to go ahead and stop the video. And I thank you all for coming and taking this time to be with Misty and I, and we hope this was helpful. Karen O says, thank you. Thank you for being here. And yeah, we hope to do more. And I will be sending you guys an email uh, in regards to more information on how you can get connected with Misty as well if you want. So thank you all for being here. And anything else, Misty? No, that's it. I appreciate all of you so much. And thanks for coming on and spending some time with us. And hopefully this was helpful. Hope it helped change some perspectives a little bit, um, feel a little bit more inspired to really step into this time and do some things that actually make you really excited to do and get some, you know, some of that stuff done or again, just rest. Sometimes it's, it comes back to just being able to rest. We live in such a do, do, do society where it's all about the goals and the, the productivity and, you know, being effective and doing things 15 times a day. And it's, it can be really exhausting. So even if your goal this time is just to rest a little bit, to rejuvenate yourself, go for it. Yes.
Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. We'll see you next time.